Hi everyone, Kathy Rose here. I'm going to talk to you about the astrological patterns for May 2024. And before I dive in to this astrological forecast, let me just ask a favor, please. At the end of this month, May 31st, I'm going to have hip surgery to repair the hip replacement I had eight years ago. It's fascinating because the implant itself, the device has had a recall. There's a part that has gone bad. And all of us who had hip replacements with that brand have to have it redone. I feel like a car going in for service. But what I wanted to ask all of you wonderful people is if you would just take a moment, even just right now in this present moment to imagine, feel, sense, know that that surgery is blessed. It flows perfectly, that my body recovers instantly, and that there is grace filling the surgery. I would really appreciate your love and support and blessings on that because I really wish I didn't have to have it done again, but I do. I need to recover quickly and perfectly. Okay, so enough about me. Now let us talk about astrology. And so as we first look at the screen and you see the Taurus mandala, um, understand the energy of Taurus, which is very fertile, grounded, nature-oriented, lots of beauty and stability. And we're going to be feeling that flowing as a, a core central theme mixed with some um, other energies. So let's talk about this because it's a complicated month. In this screen, the themes for May, the first thing you may feel is, my God, this was a very busy screen. Lots going on. You know, all those fractals and, and mandalas that are on screen and all those words. And, and that very much symbolizes the energy for May. So first, there's going to be a lot of action energy circulating this month. Um, you're going to need to move your body and exercise, and that's because Mars is going to be transiting Aries, and that brings a whole lot of self-sufficiency and independence and the concept of internal locus of control. I'll develop that more in a moment. At the same time, simultaneously with Mars energized in such a strong sign in Aries, we will have Venus in a very strong sign in Taurus. And Venus is going to shower us with frequencies of grace and beauty. Isn't that wonderful? As Mars is in Aries, which is an assertive, dynamic, action-oriented energy, we also get grace and beauty at the same time. And then towards the end of the month, Jupiter is going to change signs. It enters Gemini. And when that takes place, we're going to have a year to develop our foundational beliefs and communication energy circulating in a new way. So there's a lot happening in May. Let's just take a moment, <laughs> burn this into your retina, these very strong words, time for action. That is the central theme for May. And then the question is, how are you taking action? And with what inner energy you know, how are you doing it emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, but it is time for action, time to move your life forward. It is not necessarily time to just sit and think about what you want to achieve or even just affirm it. It is time to live it, to move it into physical form, into action. So let's talk about that. This is Mars and Aries beginning the transit April 30th and staying in Aries until June 9th. And let's talk about the positive manifestations, how you can use Mars and Aries on the highest level, which really will flow into self-sufficiency, confidence and courage, and specifically taking action to move life forward. Now, if you go back and explore what you might have been thinking about or feeling we're initiating at that Aries eclipse, which happened on April 8th. Well, this Mars and Aries transit for about six weeks is going to move that forward. And if you had a spark of new courage or new confidence that happened at the April 8th Aries eclipse, then let it spread out, live it during the Mars and Aries transit. But just generally, 
this is not a sitting still time. This is restless energy that needs to find an outlet. Now there's always the shadow potential and we can't control how other people are going to use this energy. Um, the shadow side of Mars and Aries could be impatience, frustration, anger, um, selfishness, um, narcissism, um, anything along those lines. You don't have to manifest that. I would caution you to be aware of what is going to be projected on social media it's inevitable where people might be posting things, cautioning you that the energy is going to be angry and intense. It does not have to be. You can live it on this higher level. You might observe some people being very impatient, maybe driving too fast, maybe um, going into anger moments, but you don't have to go there. You can feel confident within yourself, um, which then you know, changes the energy direction quite a bit. Now there's a larger concept I want to talk about here. And this transit that happens in May and early June with Mars and Aries can act very much like a preview for what is to come next year when Neptune and Saturn enter Aries. And this is a really interesting concept I've noticed many, many times, is that when we have outer planets getting ready to change signs before they change into that next sign, if we have a Mars transit in that sign, Mars offers us a little preview of that energy. It introduces the concept. So keep your eyes open and, and be aware of what's going on. So let's talk about the timing of this. Neptune will enter Aries in 2025. It enters the sign in March and it stays in that sign until October. Saturn enters Aries in May of 25, stays there until September. And then in the fall, September, October timeframe, Neptune and Saturn retrograde back into Pisces for one last final visit um, but then they make full entry into Aries in February of 2026. So this time frame next year, starting in the spring, going until the fall, when they first enter Aries, when Neptune and Saturn first enter Aries, um, we get a change of energy that will be dramatic. And we get to experience some of that now in May. Let me tell you what that's about. When we have this kind of big major shift, um, the Aries energy is going to bring about the concept of internal locus of control, which is flowing more positively toward believing you have the power to change and improve your situation, taking responsibility for your actions and choosing where you focus, making conscious choices where you direct your assertive energy, and believing you are capable and that other people are also capable. And this is a necessary shift that needs to take place. Believing in ourselves, having the confidence that we can take action and choosing our reactions, not feeling victimized by circumstance, not feeling victimized by the world, and certainly not blaming how we feel on the planets in astrology or how other people are treating us. This is a major shift. So here in May of 2024, start to practice some of this. Get it into your consciousness. Let your cells feel it. And then next year in 2025, it's going to be developed at a very nice level. So it really changes the energy from I can't do it, or other people are making me feel a certain way, Two, I can do it, and I'm in charge of my own energy, and I'm responsible for my reaction, and I can change my life if I want to. I love it. Of course, I have moon in Aries, and I love the Aries energy, the higher level of Aries. All right, so let's move into the new moon in Taurus, which is early in the month on May 7th at 11.22 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. This is set for the U.S. chart, set for Washington, D.C. And you see I've circled in red on the chart 
these planets in Taurus. And perhaps I should have made that circle a little bigger and included Venus in Taurus also. So we have five planets in Taurus. And this is a concentration of that earthy practicality. This is a concentration of energy that has a patient, beautiful pulse of frequency that is in rhythm with the heartbeat of the universe or the heartbeat of the earth or the mother's heartbeat, however you want to phrase that. But you can feel it right now, right? It's a beautiful, patient, steady, determined, focused, consistent pulse of practicality. That was a great sentence, wasn't it? <laughs> but that's the Taurus energy. And we're going to have this so present at this new moon. Blend with it because it it can nourish you so wonderfully. Um, at the same time, though, Mars will be in Aries. So there's a little jazzy activity under the surface here. But when these two energies work together, when you merge that focus and practicality and groundedness and stillness in the moment and patience with Mars and Aries, this is indomitable energy. I mean, this is really, really beautiful because you have the assertive action, um, the catalytic initiative to move things forward. And then you have that steady, purposeful power of Taurus working with you to say, okay, let's get that job done. So enjoy the new moon in Taurus, celebrate it, go hug a tree or go enjoy nature or just breathe in that calmness and then go do what you need to do to make your life better. Let's develop a little bit here. Let me show you an image for the Venus in Taurus transit. Venus entered Taurus May, um, April 29th and stays in it until May 23rd. Deliciously beautiful, wonderfully graceful, high frequencies of harmony and peace and stillness. And so I chose this image of these beautiful flowers. I think they're peonies that are just glorious in radiating beauty. So in this very perfectly complex month of May, where we have this mixture of energy that is, that is really awesome, we can walk with beauty and peace and harmony and grace and power and assertiveness and confidence and patience all at the same time. How nice, right? So then later in the month, we have the full moon in Sagittarius, May 23rd, 9.53 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And this is sun in Gemini at two degrees opposite moon in Sagittarius at two degrees. And so, you know, Moon in Sagittarius is playful, and nice and fun, um, but it is working with a very strong grouping of Taurus planets still. So you see, we will have four planets in Taurus at the time of this full moon. We'll have Mercury, Uranus, Jupiter, Venus. And what is so beautiful about this full moon is not really the Sagittarius statement from the moon, but the fact that Venus and Jupiter will be conjunct um, at 29 degrees in Taurus, which is the very last degree. And of course, so your mind sees this and says, wow, they're both going to move into Gemini shortly after this full moon. But this is Jupiter's last hurrah in Taurus. Jupiter expands whatever plan, whatever sign it is in. It expands the frequency of that sign and Uranus, having been in Taurus for six years now, is also expanding Taurus, which is stillness, nowness, being present, um, focusing on the practical. So Venus, Jupiter conjunct, and they're going to be making a sextile to Neptune. All you have to know about this is that beauty and harmony and grace will be flowing powerfully. Walk with power in steady, compassionate, solid, patient energy, but walk with beauty. Incorporate love into your frequency and let it shine. 
Mars will be in Aries at that time, close to the degree where we had the eclipse on April 8th, um, sitting with Chiron. So there could be there could be powerful healings taking place in your ability to receive love and radiate love. It's a beautiful full moon in Sagittarius. And we want to applaud and celebrate Venus and Jupiter conjunct in Taurus. And you may read some things about how the last the last few degrees of Taurus activates a fixed star called Algol. And you may read some scary things about that, but it's not something I want to focus on. I want to focus on the peace and the beauty and the higher levels here. This could be incredible and nourishing to every cell of your body. All right, so a few days after that full moon, we have Jupiter in Gemini. Um, it makes the shift on May 25th, and it stays in that sign until June of 2025. So Jupiter stays in a sign for about a year, sometimes a tiny bit more than a year, like a week or so. So Jupiter expanding the mutable air sign of Gemini, the, the sign that is so keyed to our nervous system, our thinking, our beliefs, our communication skills. Jupiter is going to expand all this. And on the positive level, what we get while Jupiter is in Gemini is a very active mind. Um, our belief systems will want to grow and expand. Our ability to communicate and share with others will want to grow and expand. How nice is that, right? Because communication is central to happy relationships. Um, and new ideas may pop in, you know, it, it activates the mind. So that's the nice thing. Now, the potential for the shadow showing up here, which we all need to be mindful about, would be that we will need to do a good job in managing our own nervous system. If you have Gemini planets or a very strong Mercury aspect in your chart, um, this Jupiter and Gemini transit could trigger a very, very busy mind, a mind that is hard to turn off. It could open the door to too much analysis, too much thinking, too much information gathering, and not enough action. Um, so be mindful of that when we have Jupiter and Gemini for a year. Be mindful of breathing and knowing when thinking has become unproductive when you've crossed the line into analysis paralysis and just make the change. Just be aware of it. But the positives are so wonderful. Um, communication goes to the next level, new ideas, um, brilliant thinking can take place here. And taking your understanding that your thoughts, your beliefs, your words, manifest in your life. Great time to energize your foundational beliefs, as I said at the very beginning of this video. All right, so my final thoughts. Um, the image here says it all. I used this image in the 2024 forecast I did with my good friend Pam Gregory, and we called that 24 forecast um, a, a giant leap forward. And that is essentially what's happening in May. Um, the image is somebody taking a leap between two cliffs. And in order to do this, you have to be confident. You have to believe in yourself. You have to trust your abilities. And that's what's going to be activated in May. We get to be courageous and physical and take the chance and be brave um, on many levels, not just physically, but body, mind, and spirit. It's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, so make the leap forward. Go ahead, take the jump. Okay, so um, many blessings to you and much love. Always, always enjoy the month of May. And I will make sure I get the June forecast done before I go to the hospital for this surgery. And thank you in advance for any good energy you send so that it is smooth and perfect and blessed on every level for my hip surgery. 
Thank you. Take good care. Bye for now.